Hello everyone and welcome back to Children's Church Online. My name is Jenny Blake and I am the children's pastor here at Bryanston Methodist Church. If you are new, hello and welcome. You are very much welcome here. And I hope you all had a fantastic week this past week. I think a lot of you have been on holidays, so that must have been cool. So we will have Children's Church in person at both the 9 and the 11 o'clock. So you are more than welcome to come and tell me all about what you've been up to. But before we get into this, we should start with the Lord's Prayer. So, hands together, eyes closed, bow your heads, let's go. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So, it, it, we should also celebrate birthdays, right? So if it was your birthday this past week or today, happy, happy birthday. And I hope you had a fantastic time. And we should sing to all our friends, right? So this week, we are starting a new series, and I've named them Child Stars. Did you know that there are children in the Bible, and that they were written about? Did you know that? Uh, do you know that there's actually quite a lot? Yeah. So today, we're going to learn about a young girl who lived a long time ago. We meet her in the second book of the Bible, called Ex Exodus. And it is from chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. She appears again after that, but that's when she's older. So she is the older sister of Moses. And her name is Miriam. At this time of, of Miriam's story, she is about around the age of 8 or 9. She is also a Hebrew slave that lived in Egypt. This means she lived in poverty. She had like hardly any food. She had no rights and no protection. And that she was also treated really badly by the Egyptians. She didn't get a lot of time to play and to be a kid because she had to work and she had to work really long hours. And our story begins when her little brother was born. Moses was born during a time where the Pharaoh, which is kind of like a king of Egypt, decided that there were too many Hebrews in Egypt. So he ordered his soldiers to kill all the baby boys. And that's a horrible thing. So when Moses was born, his mom and dad decided to keep him hidden for three months. And when he was three months old, he was a bit too big to hide. So what Miriam and her mom did was that they made a basket and they covered it in tar so that it would float. So they then put Moses in the basket and then put the basket into the Nile River. And they pushed it down the river to float to somewhere safe. Now, I don't know if they had any place in mind. They just wanted Moses to be safe. So, the bo basket floated down the river and happened to land in a spot where the Pharaoh's daughter, the princess of Egypt, went to go and bath. Now Miriam was told by her mom that she had to stay and watch what ha to the watch the basket to see what happened to it. 
and she had to stay hidden. Now, this was really dangerous because in the Nile, there are really big crocodiles and hippos, and there are snakes that live on the banks of the river, and some even like swim in the river. And on top of that, there could have been soldiers or other slaves that could have seen Miriam, and she would have been in so much trouble. She could have been attacked by crocodiles or hippos. Moses could have been attacked by e any of them. I mean, the basket could have sunk, and Miriam would have had to have seen that. Can you imagine how scary that must have been? How scared she must have been. Now, I want to show you a scene from the movie The Prince of Egypt. Be still now, don't cry. Sleep as you're rocked by the streams. Sleep and remember my last lullaby. So I'll be with you when you So what the movie doesn't show us is how brave and how clever Miriam is next. You see, the princess picks up Moses and falls in love with him. She wanted a baby, but she could tell that Moses was a Hebrew. Now Miriam approaches the princess and she talks to the princess. Now can you imagine a grade three slave girl walking up to the most powerful woman in all of Egypt and talking to her. She says to the princess, should I go find, should I go find a Hebrew woman to nurse the child? 
and the princess agreed and told her to go find one. So Miriam then went and fetched her mom, and they both had to pretend that they did not know Moses, because they wanted Moses to be safe, and if they s showed that they knew Moses and were his family, Moses might have been killed. So they had to pretend that they didn't know him at all. And then the princess asked Miriam's mom to nurse Moses until he was old enough. So we don't really know where Moses lived during this time. But this lesson's about Miriam. She was brave and clever. She spoke confidently to adults and put Moses before herself. She also grew up to be a prophetess, which is a woman who speaks on behalf of God. How cool is that? God looked after Miriam and Moses. God protected them from the dangerous animals and from the soldiers or other slaves that could have seen them. They were kept hidden until the right time. God also made sure that the princess was in the right place at the right time. And God protected Moses and Miriam from the very possible danger of being near the princess. God made all things work together because God is in control. So if you think you're too little to be used by God and to do incredible things, then I think you should think again. You can be brave and clever no matter where you live or how you live. God will protect you in all circumstances. And you are someone important. And that is our lesson for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Next week, we'll learn about another kid in the Bible. But for now, let's sing and dance. So up, 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 let's dance. <laughs> for worship.
shout your praise And walk away and forget your name I stand for you if that's all I do Cause there is none that compares to you Cause all I want in this lifetime is you And all I want in this whole world is you, you, you Tell the world that Jesus lives Tell the world that, tell the world that Tell the world that he died for them Tell the world that he lives again No longer I but Christ in me It's the truth that set me free How could this world be a better place But by thy mercy, by thy grace Cause all I want in this lifetime Now we have come to the end of our lesson, so we should say the benediction together. You can hold out your hands to receive the blessings of God, or you can hold your family's hands. And let's say, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forever. Amen. Amen.